Hello everyone. In this video, I have covered important questions and answers of chapter number 3, The Water by William Douglas from CBSE English textbook, Flamingo. Before I begin with questions and answers, I shall explain a very important term used in the story Dewater and it is aquaphobia, which means fear of water. So what is aquaphobia? Aquaphobia is a specific phobia. This is an irrational fear of something that doesn't cause much danger. You may have aquaphobia if you find that any source of water causes you an excessive amount of anxiety. This can include a swimming pool, a lake, an ocean or even a bathtub. Aquaphobia is often mistaken for another phobia called hydrophobia. Even though they both involve water, aquaphobia and hydrophobia aren't the same. Hydrophobia is an aversion to water that develops in humans during the last stages of rabies. The excerpt, The Water by William Douglas, is an autobiographical account of a childhood misadventure which left an indelible impression on the narrator's mind. So, theme of the story is a real-life personal account of experiencing fear and the steps taken to overcome it. And sub-theme focuses on psychological analysis of fear. Let's discuss question answers now. First, I'm going to take Think as you read. Question number one. What is the misadventure that William Douglas speaks about? Answer. William Douglas speaks about a terrifying misadventure which happened at the YMCA swimming pool when he was about 10 or 11 years old and had barely begun to learn swimming primarily by aping others. A big bully threw him into the deep end of the pool when no one was around. As Douglas realized that he was drowning, he made several attempts to save himself, but all in vain. The struggle to come to surface and to avoid getting drowned left him with a fear of water, which deprived him from enjoying water-related activities for many years. Question number two, what were the series of emotions and fears that Douglas experienced when he was thrown into the pool? What plans did he make to come to the surface? Answer, the sudden realization of being thrown into the pool did not make him lose his wits immediately. Although frightened, he thought of a trick to come up to the surface but couldn't execute it successfully. He panicked and felt suffocated by the water. His heart pounded loudly. His limbs became paralyzed with fear. His mind became dizzy and his lungs ached as he swallowed water while making desperate attempts to come out of the water. Finally, he lost all his strength and willingness to keep struggling and blacked out. Douglas planned to allow himself to go down till his feet hit the water so that he could make a big jump to come back to the surface like a cork. Then he would lie flat on the surface of water and pedal to the edge of the pool. Question number three. How did this experience affect him? Answer. The near-death experience of drowning had a very strong impact on his psychology. He was deeply disturbed and shaken by the whole experience. A haunting fear of water took control of his physical strength and emotional balance for many years. As he couldn't bear being surrounded by water, his social life was ruined. He was deprived of enjoying boating, swimming and fishing. Question number four. Why was Douglas determined to get over his fear of water? Answer. Douglas regretted being deprived of enjoying water-based activities and adventurous sports like annoying, boating, fishing and swimming. His ardent desire to enjoy such activities and regain his lost confidence while staying in water were the reasons for his determination 
to get over his fear of water. Question number five. How did the instructor build a swimmer out of Douglas? Answer. The instructor worked gradually on Douglas' psychology, moved on to his physical movements and then integrated each part to build a swimmer out of him. Initially, he made Douglas swim back and forth across the swimming pool so that he could get used to it. He used an elaborate mechanism with a rope, belt, pulley and overhead cable to help them stay connected while Douglas was in the pool. Then, one by one, he made Douglas master the individual techniques of swimming, like putting his head in the water, exhaling and inhaling while in water, movements of his hands, body, legs, etc. Finally, he integrated these perfected steps into a whole experience of swimming for Douglas. Thus, piece by piece, a swimmer was built. Question number six. How did Douglas make sure that he conquered the old terror? Answer. Even after the swimming training was over, Douglas wasn't confident about his swimming or that he had overcome the fear. He was determined to completely get rid of it forever. He swam alone in the pool. He went to Lake Wentworth to dive. There he tried every possible stroke he had learned. He fought back the tiny vestiges of terror that gripped him in the middle of the lake. Finally, in his diving expedition in the warm lake, he realized that he had truly conquered his old terror. Let's focus on understanding the text. They are long answer type questions and uh, very important as far as board examinations are concerned. How does Douglas make clear to the reader the sense of panic that gripped him as he almost drowned? Describe the details that have made the description vivid. Answer. Douglas takes us through his near-death experience at the YMCA pool by describing every little aspect associated to it. He details minutes of his emotional, mental and physical struggle with the paralyzing fear of being drowned in the water. The first person narration of the incident also helps us to associate with his experience more deeply. Though he did not lose his wits initially, he panicked when his strategy didn't work. His feeling of suffocation, aching lungs, anxiety and losing hold on his senses make the reader's experience what he does. His eyes couldn't see beyond the dirty yellow water. His voice got frozen. His limbs became stiff with fear and his mind dizzy. Only beating heart and pounding head indicated that he was alive. His desperation to save himself kept him struggling until he went down the third time and blacked out. All these details of his terrorizing experience give a graphic description of what he felt underwater. The lucidity of the description makes the reader go up and down with him underwater. Question number two. How did Douglas overcome his fear of water? Answer. At first, he tried to overcome his fear of water on his own. But when this failed, he got an instructor for himself who worked on Douglas' fear very methodically. With his help, Douglas began by learning to be at ease in water. After this, he practiced exhaling, inhaling in water to eliminate the fear of putting his head inside the water. Then he moved on to master individual steps of swimming which were finally integrated into a complete experience of swimming by his instructor. After about six months, Douglas could not only swim well but was also free of his fear to a great extent. At this stage, 
William's journey of truly overcoming his fear to its tiniest vestiges began. He swam alone in the pool, he went to Lake Wentworth to dive and tried every possible stroke he learnt. Finally, he swam across the warm lake confidently and conquered his fear completely. Question number three. Why does Douglas, as an adult, recount a childhood experience of terror and his conquering of it? What larger meaning does he draw from his experience? Answer. Douglas recounts his childhood experience at the YMCA pool to enable the readers to understand the exact nature and intensity of the terror. The fear of being surrounded by the water, the fear of putting his head in the water, the fear of choking and the fear of his limbs going numb couldn't have been explained to a reader ignorant of Douglas' childhood experience. In that case, the elaborate strategy adopted by the author and the time taken by him to learn and master even simple things, though put in the perspective of a sphere of water, couldn't have been understood properly. The larger meaning that he drew from his experience is that it is not the death, but the fear of death that terrorizes us. For him, the importance of life became evident when he faced death and terror it could produce, his will to live grew in intensity. Now, I am going to discuss few important questions related to the story D. Water by William Douglas. Question number one, how and when did Douglas develop an aversion to water? Answer, his aversion to water began when he was three or four years old and his father took him to the beach in California where the waves knocked him down and overpowered him. This petrified him and created the phobia in his mind. Question number two. Why did Douglas still continue with his practice even after the instructor was finished? Answer. The instructor managed to build swimmer out of Douglas in about six months, but he was still apprehensive about swimming all alone in the pool. So, even after the coach left, the feeling of fear resurfaced every time he ventured into the water to overcome it. He went to Lake Wentworth, from there to westwards, where he subjected his swimming to tough test and felt satisfied. He was thrilled with joy as he had conquered his fear of water. Question number three. Douglas fully realized the truth of Roosevelt's statement, all we have to fear is fear itself. How did this realization help him brush aside his fear and become an expert swimmer? Answer, the quote, all we have to fear is fear itself by President Roosevelt is absolutely true. It is only the fear of consequences which prevents us from taking action and hampers our progress. Douglas had experienced both the sensation of dying and the terror that fear of it can produce. Strong will, determination, courage and hard work wins over our terrors and fears. The will to live brushes aside all our fears and insecurities. This realization made him resolve to learn swimming by engaging an instructor. The instructor, piece by piece, built Douglas into a swimmer. Then he went to Lake Wentworth, dived at Triggs Island and swam two miles across the lake to Stamp Island. Finally, he had conquered his fear of water. Students, according to latest pattern of English core paper, you will get one reference to context question from prose also along with poetry. It's a four marks question. So you should be thorough with the text of all the chapters. Here I have taken one extract to help you understand how to go about it. My advice to you is that uh, you have to read the extract twice and then answer the questions accordingly. Extract based questions. Read the extract and answer the questions that follow. It had happened when I was 10 or 11 years old. I had decided to learn to swim. 
there was a pool at the YMCA in Yakima that offered exactly the opportunity. The Yakima River was treacherous. Mother continually warned against it and kept fresh in my mind the details of each drowning in the river. But the YMCA pool was safe. Question number one. Name the story and its writer. The name of the story is Deep Water, written by William Douglas. Question number two. When did the writer decide to learn to swim? He decided to learn to swim when he was about 10 or 11 years old. Question number three. Where did the writer decide to learn swimming? The writer decided to learn swimming at YMCA pool in Yakima. Question number four. Why did his mother warn him against swimming in the Yakima River? Answer. His mother warned him against swimming in the Yakima River as many people had drowned there. Thank you for watching. Like, share and subscribe English Tutorials by Poonam Thakur.